Welcome back everyone. Till this point what we have seen is we implemented Spring Security of course using Spring Boot and then we were able to log in with the help of username and password which is fetched from database. To achieve that we have used an authentication provider in which we have created the object of DAO authentication provider and then we have assigned the user detail service object and then we have used one thing here which is the password encoder. Now the amazing thing is we have specified it is no op password encoder which simply means I don't want to encode my password it will be in plain text. And if you go back to your database which we have already used you can see we have a username as spiderman and we have a password as web. Now is it a good idea of having your password in a plain text? Of course not right. If anyone can hack your website or anyone can hack your database they will be seeing all your user passwords. We don't want that. At least your user details should be secure. So instead of using no op password, we should be using some encryption way. Now of course you can use some encryption technique here and you can convert your normal plain text, I mean the plain text password into a secure text, something like that. Let's say cryptography or cipher text. Now in this case the problem is even if you go for cipher text, it is not a good idea right because anyone can decode or anyone can decrypt. So they can use certain techniques and there are something hacking ways. So yes, it is not safe to work with uh, ciphertext. What about hashes? Now one of the way you can do that is with the help of SHA. Because in SHA, doesn't matter how big your password or how small your password is, the output length will be constant. That's not the case with ciphertext, right? So we should be using hashing here. But which one? Should we use message digit 5? Of course not, that's very old. Uh, we can go for SHA-256 or SHA-512 but then you know a few years back there was an attack on SHA as well. So hackers were able to crack it or hackers were able to create some collision codes. So what to use now? Now specifically the problem with SHA is we can have multiple computation or multiple calculation happening at the same time you can find SHA. But what if you can make it slow? What if you can have multiple rounds of hash? Because if you have multiple rounds, it will be easier for you to protect it. And to achieve that, especially for working with passwords, we have a new concept which is known as Bcrypt. So if you search for Bcrypt online, it says Bcrypt is a password hashing function designed by these two great people. And then it is based on Blowfish Cypher. That's great. The thing is, it came because SHA was not that secure. If you read the article, there are so many articles on this, how to use it. In fact, we have some website where you can generate the hashing. Example, if you go to this website, which is BrowseLink, and if you type a password, let's say if I want to encrypt 1234, instead of saving 1234 in the database, we should be storing the hash of it. So we can simply click on Bcrypt here and you will get the output. Now you can see there's something interesting here, which says 10. Now this 10 simply means it is going for 10 rounds. Uh, by default it's 10 rounds but you can also make it 12 rounds. If you say 12, it will calculate the hash 12 times. And if you say Bcrypt now, uh, you can see the, the code will also change. So this $2a means it is for Bcrypt. Then we have $12 is the number of rounds you have. And then if you go forward, this is your actual password okay, of dollar. So this is your actual password. But in the database, you will be storing everything. Uh, if you try for A, B, C, D here, if you say Bcrypt, what will change is the next part, right? This thing will remain constant. Let's go for 10 rounds here and click on Bcrypt and that's your password for A, B, C, D. In fact, if you go to database, you can actually match. Can you see that at the end? Okay, we got a different password this time. Yeah, this is different, but that, that's fine. You can use this one as well. So what I will be doing here is, you can see we already have two passwords here, but I'm not sure is it 1234 for which one? I forgot the password. Is it 1234 for Naveen? Let's try. So what I will do is I will try to use Bcrypt. So this two is actually Bcrypt passwords, which I already have it in my machine. So let me just go back to my workbench and here, instead of mentioning no op password encoder, we should be using Bcrypt. Now you might be thinking we have to add some libraries, right? Don't worry. By default in Spring Boot, we have a library for Bcrypt. Let's try. So we can simply create the object of Bcrypt here. So we can say new Bcrypt and you can see we have Bcrypt password encoder. Let's click on that and you can see it has also imported the package here which is Bcrypt password encoder. That's great. Now we don't need this one. So we can say control shift O which will remove all the unwanted 
you know, it, which will arrange all your imports. And that's a, that's the only line you have to change. It's that awesome, right? Now let's relaunch the application. Now, of course, one thing will not work. The password for Spider-Man and Superman will not work because they are in plain text. So let's try for Naveen and uh, Kiran here. So we'll say localhost colon 8080. And of course, it will give you a sign-in page. This time I will say Naveen. And the password, I guess it is ABCD for Naveen. Let's do that. And when you say sign in, can you see that it, it is working? So the password which I have stored in the database is this one. But I'm just trying ABCD, it is working. Let me just do that once again. So let's say localhost colon 8080 login and I will say Naveen. If I use some different password, you can see it says bad credentials. And if I try for Spider-Man, and if I say web, this will not work now because the password is stored in plain text. So in database as well, when you create the user account, you have to make sure that you store the password in a Bcrypt encryption format or Bcrypt hash formats. Uh, that's about Bcrypt. In the next video, we'll also see how do you customize this form page because I don't want this login form. Of course, this is good, but this is given by Spring, right? What if you want to have your own the login form? Can we use that? So that, that will see in the next video. I hope you are enjoying this series. Let me know in the comment section. And if you, and also click on the like button. Thank you so much.